Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here. Did you know there was an update to the Creative Cloud in early November? You did? Great! If you didn't, where have you been? So, in this video I'm going to take you through one of the updated features to transform warp. A couple of extra things in here which may make your life a little bit easier editing. And we're going to do it with this cactus here, which is kind of leaning to the right hand side. Well, not kind of, it definitely is. And we want to straighten it up and make it look a little bit more happy. So the starting image here is a JPEG file, just a background layer in here. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to drag my layers panel out here. I will need to release it from the background. And then, uh, of course, <laughs> rename that. So cactus, of course, don't leave any randomly named layers in your layers panel. And then I'm going to right click on that layer name and then choose convert to smart object because still the transform warp effect if you do apply it to a layer that isn't a smart object and isn't protected when you go back to transform and warp you will not find the controllers or the mesh there to re-edit it's a one-time only thing so convert to smart object now that's protected and then if i just took our friend the last panel back down there thank you last panel to the edit menu and then down to transform in the sub menu we have warp and what it will do then is it will put a warp around the outside and um, we have uh, very similar to the old way it used to work we have a warp menu so you could warp it and take a look at the thumbnail icons in here and that's how it will warp and distort your artwork now i'm going to leave those this time click away from that you could choose to have a grid that will put on there it will split your um, artwork up into equal rows and columns of three by three or five by five so my suggestion is if that's the route you're going to go down choose the one with the simplest divisions in so anything that's a mesh or a warp or anything that's like this broken down into a grid you'll want to start simple and add the detail only when necessary because obviously more points means that you've got more fiddling around and tweaking to do now in this case i'm not even going to do that because i'm going to go up here i'm going to reset the warp and then you can actually choose where you want to add the rows and columns it's under a feature now called split so if i was to take my cursor and then hover over and then split columns and rows to show you that one first of all you have to hover your cursor over the image and then if i hover it around about here i can then left click and let go i'm trying to almost leave the bottom section where the plant pot is um un unaffected so this will allow me to have a point that goes up vertically that i can pull this uh, cactus into position and then try not to affect anything lower down uh, I can then also go up to this one here, which is to add a row or a horizontal split. Click on that one, and then I'm going to hover it around about here, and then left click. So from here, I can then hover over one of those points, left click on it, which is always important because it may well have multiple points active, and then click and drag. And I can pull this around here, like so. Now it's beginning to distort a little bit, so I need another point in the middle here. So again, I'll go back up, click on horizontal split, Hover over I want it in the preview uh, around about here and then left click. So that's kind of where the, the right on the edge of the tangent is for that curve. Left click again, pull that in like so. And then let's, let's just give it a little bit of extra growth in there and, and make it reach for the stars. Come on, uh, Cactus, you can do it. And then spin that round. And down here again, I, this is we've got a little bit of a bend in here. So I may want to go and add another horizontal split. Hover over here, left click click in here and then just spin that around a little bit in there click on the point in the middle pull that across that was a little bit too much <laughs> clearly um, and then just tinkering with these a little bit just to move them around if you pull these sections too far apart you're going to get a noticeable stretch in here now we don't want that so we don't want any uh, kind of stretch lines in there we're just trying to straighten this up so again I click on this one and then spin this one around a little bit as well and um, you have to watch out for the edges because it is possible sometimes that you can pull those edge handles in. So if you do find you get a little seam being pulled out here, I mean, that could be quite good for a material effect or something like that when you were revealing something in the background and another layer. But if it does, you can always pull these off, even off the edge of the, uh, of the canvas as well. So that works quite well. Uh, with that done, I'm just going to zoom into the middle in here just to see it's a little bit more closely. Click on that point. I'm going to click on this one here. Now, if I do move this one, it's going to move the plant pot as well. So I have to be very, very careful with that. I'm just going to move this ever so slightly. And you have to make sure that you're not going to bend the, uh, the, the flower pot as well in there in a way that's undesirable. So I'm trying to do this with as minimum fuss as possible. And then zoom in a little bit more. 
think we've got kind of a straight line working in there. Move this one up a touch, like so. And with that, I, you know, fairly happy. Um, and then I, just one last glance around the outside. Make sure you haven't pulled any of the image in and got any gaps around the outside. With that, I'm happy. I can go up to the top. I can click on the tick. It applies the transform warp in there. And notice that still, it would be awesome. I mean, I would, I would gladly make an icon for Adobe that just had a little warp symbol on here. So we knew, you know, I would be willing to do that. I would love to see that feature added to the layers panel in there. Just so you know, when you pick up someone else's artwork, what's happened to it, just as an indicator. If it is a smart object, the only way really to find out is to go to the edit menu, down to transform, and then choose warp again, and you'll see the grid reappears on screen. Now, if I hadn't have chosen to turn that layer into a smart object, we will be starting from scratch again with whatever edited form of that image looked like. So yeah, you can go back in, you can alter these points, drag and pull them around, and then we uh, we have our image looking the way that you know we want it in there. So back up to the top, click on the tick, and that, folks, is the newly updated Transform Warp inside of Adobe Photoshop CC 2020. Wow, that was a mouthful. There will be a direct link to this image you can download and have a go yourselves. Maybe you'll get a better effect. Maybe you can create a weird and wonderful cactus of your own. Maybe turn it into a letter. Who knows? Um, so until next time, folks, farewell.